I will point out most of these answers are actually very similar to each other. Um, this to me looks like someone did a positive, but for the most part I'm seeing negative 6 fifteenths or negative 15 6. And if you simplify that, you do get negative 5 halves. So most of us are getting similar answers. Um, the question really is, and this is what we need to focus on, how did we calculate slope? So I compared the two points to find the common difference. I counted the rise and the run. I took the second number and subtracted it from the first. On the chart for x, negative 2 and 4 being added, and 6 and negative 9 are being subtracted. So what I see a lot of is some correct ideas, but I also see where some of us are going a little off. In general, what is the main thing that we learned about slope yesterday? Rise the run. There was, let's reword one of those things. Rise there we go. It's a ratio, rise divided by run. How else did we end up defi defining slope yesterday? Delta something, delta y, delta x. So what do we mean by delta? No, the, the, the difference, the like, it's the change, the change, right? So when we talk about rise, we're talking about how much the y is changing. So the change in y divided by the change, the change in x, right? That's the run, how far it's changing in the x direction. Which at the very end, we found a new way to do it. You don't have to, but what did, how did we end up writing the change in y with the two points? If we, so y2 minus what? Oh, y, y, one of those. One of those. Remember, it's a change in y. So it's y2 minus y1. It's a change in y. So I'm finding the difference in those two things. And then so delta x, the change in x would be? Can you use any of those three? Should they give us the same answer? Yes. So let's check to see what it would actually be. Okay, so notice I gave you both a table and a graph. You do it whichever way you want. Um, and the thing I do want you to understand is you can do it however you want, but realistically, are you going to want to make a graph for these two points? Probably not. Probably not. Can you to find the rise and then the run? Yes. yes. That is a totally valid way to do it. You can do it every time if you want. However, there's probably a more efficient way to do it. That's where the table and the equation comes in. But the graph is always a good go-to. Um, does it matter which point I start at? No? So let's say I start here. How am I going to get to this point? Down. Down. Okay, if I go down 6, I get to here. So am so I just going down 6? No. Nope. How far am I going down? 15. How far? 15. 15. Notice how it was down 6 and then down another 9. That's another way to recognize that total is down 15. Anytime you're going across 0, it's actually really easy. 6 to 0, that's 6 down. 0 to negative 9, that's another negative 9. Er, Subtracting another 9. So then, how far did I go to the right? 6. 6. Would that be a positive or negative? Positive. Why? Because okay, we're from negative 6 to a positive 4. Okay. So if I look at my slope this way, what is my rise? Uh, negative 6. Over 6. Remember, rise, negative that's going up and down. So, negative 15 divided by? 6. That's 6. Really quickly, I want everyone to pick up a calculator. I want you to put negative 15 divided by 6 into that calculator. Does this mean you didn't even try the bell reader? You wanted the ones? Negative 5. Then that sign not have, that wouldn't have been there. Does anyone know whose phone that was that just went off? You got to silence it before you get to class. So what was sign? That notification. Oh, that was because I deleted it. That's right. Negative 5 divided by 2. Hey, I want you to recognize and understand, do you have to know how to simplify these fractions? No. No, your calculator will do it for you. All right? Negative 5 divided by 2. Now, is it possible that someone went from here up? 
Yeah. Yes? Let's see if it gives the same answer. How far am I going up? So that be positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? Going up. Then to the? Left. To the left, 6, so negative 6. So doing it that way, I get negative, or positive 15 divided by negative 6. Put it in the calculator, what do we get? Negative 5. Ah, negative 5 divided by 2. So does it matter which way we do it? No. You can get it either way. Do you have to know how to simplify that fraction? No. no. It does it for you. But please simplify those fractions since the calculator does it for you. Any questions about this so far? Yes. What's your question? Um, why? Why, again, is it have 15 at the top? Uh, because it's rise, so up and down first. And then it's run, so going across. Okay. What do you think it was the other way? I don't know. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Okay. Remember, it's similar over here. If you look at the change in y, that's over here. That's my rise. If I'm going from 6 to negative 9, how much am I taking away? Okay, if I have a positive and I have a negative, what number do I have to cross? Zero. zero. I have to cross a zero. How far is 6 from zero? Six. So I'm taking away 6. How far is 0 from negative 9? Nine. 9. So I'm taking away another 9. Okay. So how far is it total? 15. Taking away 15. Notice, if you can, because I feel like it's easier when it's just positives, right? 6 to 9 is how far away? 15. Three. 15. 6 to 9. Oh. 3. Three. How far away is negative 6 and negative 9? 15. Three. Negative 6 and negative 9. <laughs> 3. Negative oh. 6 and negative 9? 3. Negative 3. There's still 3 away, right? When they're both positive and both negative, it's easier to recognize. It's harder maybe sometimes when we're going across that 0, but just recognize the zeros there and then count it that way. Um, how far is it from negative 2 to 4? 6. How, are we adding or subtracting? Adding. Let's go from a negative okay. to a positive. So we're adding 6. Again, negative 2 to 0 is 2. 0 to 4 is another 4. Total of 6. So if I define it this way, I get negative 15 divided by 6, which is negative 5 halves. We good with that? Ready to move forward? Okay. The last thing I want to point out is, what was the new thing we learned yesterday? We're going to get to that in a second. This right here. What is this called? This is known as the slope formula. Okay, You have learned how to calculate slope other ways in the past, but I do want to make sure that we understand how to calculate slope doing this, because I did have one student come in this morning for tutoring, which I was really happy to have someone come in, and we had to talk about how to use that slope formula. When we say y sub 2, what do we mean? The second point the first one. The second, well, the sub 2 is the second point. The sub 1 is the first point. first point. Okay? So, London, what is the y value of the second point? This one right here is the y value of the second point? Not sure. You think so? Okay. Let me clarify then. Let me ask this question. Uh, Mikhail, which point is the second point? Huh? This one? That's the second point? No. Why is this one the second point? Can anyone tell me why this is the second point? Zarya? It's the second line. Well, it's just, I mean, in general, we go from top to bottom. bottom. So which one is second? The bottom. The bottom. Right, then you go with that. Okay. Now, we also need to remember the points go in alphabetical order. What comes first, X or Y? X. So this is X, and this is Y. 
So London, do you stand by negative 2 is the second y value? Or the y value of the second point? Or do you want to change your answer? Huh, it's not negative 2? So what's the y value of my second point? Okay. Do you agree with that, Ireland? No? I don't agree with What do you think it is, Ireland? It's the negative 9. It's the negative 9 here? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's the second, um, the second point in the y. Okay, does that make sense, London? Okay. So we want the second point, and that's the y value of the second point. Good? So we're starting with? Negative 9. Alright, what is, so I'm now subtracting y1, what's the y value of my first point? Why are you calling me? Why are you whining? Because you're a student whining. in my class. That was, that was a whine. Though. I said, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? me? <laughs> Just like that, that's how you said that, okay? Because okay. I want to make sure you're engaged and paying attention, and I was literally just writing something, so I called on someone I knew. So, what's the y value of the first point? On these points, right, we have negative 2, 6, and we have 4, negative 9. Jalen, you agree with that? Oh, my God. How are you going to learn if you aren't even look, paying attention to what's going on? Like, I cannot be teaching any more than what I'm doing right now. you ain't paying attention. Because you weren't paying attention. What is that? Do you agree with Ari that that is the y value of the first point? Yes. The 6? Yes. Okay, thank goodness. I didn't need to repeat it. Yeah, you need to repeat it because you weren't paying attention, son. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought, okay? Jeremy, what's the x value of the second point? Negative 9. Okay, so this is the x value of the second point? It's the four. Really, which, one you, which one do you think it is? Four. Remember, it's alphabetical. So what comes first? X. X. So there's my four. Minus. Okay, Darren. What do you think the x value of the first point is? So minus. This is important. Minus negative two. Is the whole subtracting a negative, which is why I don't love using the slope formula. But there it is. Anyone want to guess what negative 9 minus 6 is? Negative 15. The same negative 15 we've been getting? Yeah. And what is 4 minus a negative 2? 6. So we get the slope the same way. Or is it the same slope? Same slope. Same slope. So it's your choice. Do you want to use a graph? Do you want to use a table? Do you want to use the formula? I don't care which one you use, but you will have to at least show me that you can do all three tomorrow. So just heads up. Originally, we were supposed to have a test tomorrow. I moved that test. We're going to have a quiz. No, not to next Friday. We're not moving it a whole week. <laughs> we're moving it to Tuesday um, so that we can review on Monday. But we need to move a little bit more quickly. Uh, we've got a little over an hour to learn as much as possible. Obviously, we're missing a whole bunch of the freshman guys, correct? Okay. What I'm going to need you all to do is I'm probably going to move this group three a little bit tomorrow so that some of you all that are here can work with them but we're going to continue with something called distance and midpoint, and then slope will be on that quiz as well. We all clear on that? What quiz? The quiz that you're taking tomorrow on slope, distance, and midpoint. Okay. So, you will take it at the end of class, but right now let's quickly go over the quiz that I just passed back. Um, hopefully we understand slope well now. Do we need to talk about any of numbers 1 through 6 on the quiz? Yes, just like on the homework, you are supposed to name those geometric concepts. I tell me did name them. Huh? I did name No, you told me what they were, not what their That's name what I was. Thought you meant by name. I know you no, 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 no. If I were to tell you what you are, I would say that you are a young black man. Your name is Jalen Wilder. You see how that's different? Oh, yeah. You are more of a person when you name that thing, right? 
You gotta name these. They are. You gotta recognize what they are. We clear? Go. Can you please go number six? Number six. Yeah. Why did that arrow die? Because this is a line. Why can't you just put just a line? Because if it's just that, that means it could. That's a segment. That is a line segment. That looks like this. Oh my gosh. But isn't it better that we're learning it now than before the or then on the test? Yes. All right. Did you have a question? I thought you said. I ain't that on the <laughs> Josh. Hmm. Someone's talking. Oh, Be respectful. I thought on the test you told us, I mean, on number one, you had said go from, I thought you said go from left to right when you do that. You always do the arrow left to right. You always do the arrow that you're drawing left to right. But see how this is an end point kind of on that arrow? What's the end point? K. Right. So it's K to the arrow side, J. Does that make sense? Okay. And again, like, we need to stop. First off, this is your quiz. Take notes on it. Okay. You can learn from your mistakes. You can grow and get better and be better prepared for the test. Because if you do better on the test, guess what? Yeah. So let's learn as well as possible. Sorry, one second. I forgot that I haven't given uh, Ireland's back. Here you go, Ireland. So you can take some notes. Any other questions on numbers one through six? Ready to move forward? Okay. So here is everything I was looking for in number seven. Some of us got some of it, but we needed to notice all of it. Classify the angles each separately. X is an acute angle. 130, that's an obtuse angle. I was also looking for they are a linear pair. They are adjacent and supplementary. That is the complete classification of everything that is there. I saw some people try to say they were vertical angles. We need to go back and study what vertical angles are if we are saying that. Vertical angles are only created when? When it's two lines intersecting. And then remember, the vertical angles are the ones across from each other. Right? Those are the vertical angles, and those are congruent, but that's not what we have here. We have a linear pair, remember, it's creating that line. Any other questions on 7, 8, or 9 based on what we missed and what we see on the board right now? Say again? The grade for eight on seven. Is the grade for eight on seven? Yeah, no. I'm trying to grade for eight. That's why. There should be a separate grade for eight. I Unless I made a mistake. Expecting on 11, um, that's because I messed up. If you said, hey, DAC is just CAD backwards, you are correct. Uh, so if you said 46, I, I let that go. What I meant to say was DAB. Because notice, if I take this smaller angle and I add it to this smaller angle, I get this full angle of 68 degrees. Okay. Notice, so 46 degrees plus the measure of angle BAD. Okay, and this is one thing that I do want you to take a note on because I, this is something I have noticed some students missing. You good? Huh? You're not going to get it right now. All right. Look, if I say this, how would you read that? Bad. 
<laughs> angle B A D. Okay? When I put the M here, what am I saying? The measure of angle B A D. You need to know that distinction. When I say M and then an angle, that's the measure of that angle. Yeah, I say they look the same. You put zero. We said correct. So like, huh? I say they look the same, right? Under 11. But you put zero. They're the same? Yeah. You said they were correct. And that's what I said. I believe they were the same. No, you said they're the same distance apart. First off, an angle measure is not a distance. Secondly, secondly, if you had said, hey, I think it's 46 degrees, I would have accepted that. You did not say they were 46 degrees. But. Not. Nah, no but. All right. Um, overall, I, the, oh, the only thing I want to remind you all in 10 is a lot of people said of twos are measures greater than 90 degrees. You also got to remember they're less than 180. Okay? Of twos means between 90 and 180. Um, oh, and I think I also say, saw some people say 91 degrees or more. But if you had a 90.1, would that be obtuse, acute, or right? Obtuse. Obtuse. Right? So it's just more than 90 degrees. That's the thing to notice. Huh? Say a lot of Yeah, yeah. I was going to talk about 12. The last thing I'm going to talk about is 12, and this is probably the most important because we haven't addressed this yet, and that's my fault. I realized that when I was grading the quiz, so I didn't count off for this. How would you read this statement? It's a line segment, segment. Line segment of EF, right? Mm -hmm. If I do not write the line segment above it, that is read as the length of EF. So, line segment, EF, this is the length of EF. Okay? Do you notice EF is this entire thing here? Mm -hmm. Some people said 18.4 and 18.4, um, but notice we need to split the 18.4 in half. And I don't think I saw anyone say this, but I need you to remember a midpoint is a segment, segment bisector. The, last, the reason why most of us did not get a 6 on number 12 is because I was looking for the fact that it was a segment bisector. I think you still got fives or five and a halfs if you had the other information there. But a midpoint is always a segment bisector. Ready to move forward? Yeah. Yeah? It's going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. So. Please get out the as the crow flies that we started on yesterday. Say again. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm glad it's not just me. What are you saying? Was it about that dude trying to get to that house? Yes, that dude trying to get to that girl's house. Now, why are you assuming it's a guy? Because why? Yeah, her house. Why is the, the other person a guy? Maybe it's a girl trying to hang out with her girlfriend, you know? And like, this is your house. house so, huh? This is my point of view. Yeah, so you just assumed it was a guy. Yeah. I don't know, it sounds like a patriarchy system right there. It is. Yeah. All right. So, with the... Um, as the crow flies, what we're trying to look at is showing how the distance formula is connected to the Pythagorean theorem, which we talked about it yesterday. What is the Pythagorean theorem? Okay, when can you use that theorem? Right angle. Not right angle. There we go. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, and that is only true in a right triangle. Okay? And so we're going to use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem to calculate distance. So do you have to use the distance formula that we're going to discover today? No, no look at those directions. Or the objectives. I can use the distance formula 
or the Pythagorean theorem. You can use either one. When we talk about slope, do you have to use the y2 minus y1 no. divided by x2 minus x1? No. no. Okay? You just have to be able to calculate slope. There are options. That's what I'm trying to teach you. So we're trying to identify the midpoint also between two points. So we'll get to that today. Yesterday, um, I know we answered number one, correct? Yeah. Yes. How many blocks? 16. 16, right? And I believe we counted either down or across, and then we went over. And so we had six blocks here, 10 blocks there. And so walking or driving, 16 blocks. Okay? So what if you could use a helicopter? And I think this is kind of where we started to end it yesterday. But what if you could use a helicopter? What are you going to do? Fly. You're going to fly there, right? So are you going to go down and across? No. no? You're going to go straight there, right? So Josh, what, if, what shape did we just create? Not just any old triangle. A right triangle. Why is it important that it's a right triangle? Yeah, we we're looking for the, the hypotenuse, right? What are you trying to calculate? This the, distance. the distance, right? And the distance is the hypotenuse of that right triangle? Yes. Yes? So what can I use to find that distance? The Pythagorean theorem, right? So I believe you should already have this written. If you don't, make sure you have it written down because you're going to need this for yourself tomorrow and to help those in your group. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, right? What? Oh, Why do you like it the other way? <laughs> <laughs> square plus B squared equals C squared. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is 3 plus 5 equal to 8? Oh my god. Oh. Yes. yes. Plus so is 8 eight. equal to 3 plus 5? Yes. But it feels so backwards. Can you write that? Can you just please? Okay. I promise, okay. I can in a second, but I promise you there's a reason why I wrote it like this. What is A? 6 or 10. It doesn't matter. Here's the reason why I wrote it like this. C squared is equal to 6 squared plus 10 squared. Okay. And let's just use a calculator. Pick a calculator up. What is 6 squared plus 10 squared? I thought you were going to have to teach out five. 130. Right. You don't think I just saw you punch the shot? Are we serious? It didn't hurt. It doesn't matter. We don't do that. Okay, say it one more time. 136. 136. C squared is equal to 136. Hey, let me ask you this. Where do you usually like your variable? On the left side or on the right side? Left side. So I know that we're used to the C squared being on the right side. It doesn't matter. I also know that you're, you usually like the variable to be on the left side. That's why I started with C squared. You do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Because what am I going to do next? Oh, I'm not take plugging in numbers. Say again. What's going to undo a square? A square root. You can totally plug in numbers, but here's the thing, Ari. I got to mix up what you I to Okay. But I was going to say, like, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144. You see how it's not really 11 or 6? It's somewhere in between? 11.6. Okay. So just make sure that you understand I have to take a square root to get to undo the square. So what do I need to do on the right-hand side? Do the same thing. Okay. Why do I need to take a square root on the right-hand side? To make sure it's equivalent. Right? I have to take a square root on both sides to make sure they are equivalent. So, what is the square root of 136? Did anyone not get a decimal when they plugged it in? Did we all get decimals? Yeah. How, to, how did you do what? Like get the decimal? Or do, we know, do you know how to get to the square root? Okay, do you see where it says... So, do you see x squared on the calculator? I did. Okay, so above x squared in gray, what does it say? Oh, don't say nothing. No, in gray, oh. square root. So hit control and then hit x squared and it's going to put a square root in there. 11.6. Okay? You did the square root of 136 and got 11.6? Let me see. 
What are you pressing? Aww. No. It's above the x squared in gray. So control, x squared. You have to hit control and then the x squared button. Anytime you see a gray thing, you got to hit the control first to access it. Okay? So don't forget, if you put a decimal, it'll automatically give you a decimal in the output. So 11.6 what, by the way? We all got blocks, right? Okay, we did not start on number three yesterday, I believe, like as a whole class, did we? No. So let's look at that one together. Before I have you start working again, did we at least get to number three within our small groups? No. I thought we did. Can you raise your hand if you did get to number three? No one else did? Okay. Just to establish what they're saying, school right here, that is the origin, right? There's my y axis, there's my x axis. What are the coordinates for this point and for this point? We all good? Does that make sense? Ready to get to work within your groups? Okay, go ahead and get to work. Um, try to identify those coordinates. If you get done with number three, move on to number four, which is on the back side, but let's get to work. Um, Brandon, if you want to join group uh, seven, that'd be a good group for you to be in right now.